Glad you joined me today. Of course, I'm Beecher Moorfield, and we're talking about faith. This is part of our online school of ministry. Uh, you're able to view these videos, learn. I pray that you will take the time not only to view and listen, but to make some notes. And if you have questions or interesting points of discussion, we will make time in these, in these videos in our series that we're doing. We'll teach about 30 minutes and then we'll give you some time to discuss it. Then we'll do 30 more minutes and give you some time to discuss it. So we want you to make notes. If you have questions that are as yet unanswered, submit them to your group leader. And that group leader will get those questions to me. I will respond to those questions as soon as I receive them and get the answers back to you. Our point is this. I'm a man of God. I've been a Christian for 58 years. I've been in ministry for 46 years at some level. I pastored for 28 years. I've traveled for years, some years before that. And for the past three years, since we're uh, stepping aside from our pastoral role, my wife and I have been traveling internationally. I'm with the John Maxwell Group. We uh, train people in leadership. But here's the point. You can be a great leader, but if you don't know how to operate in faith, my friend, all you're doing is barking at clouds. You're, you're not accomplishing anything. I don't care how loud a dog barks, that cloud is not disturbed by what it does. That cloud's going to do what the cloud does. And I don't care how great a leader you are. If you don't have faith, the Spirit of God is going to do what the Spirit of God does without you. You're not going to impact it. It requires faith to move God. The Bible says in Hebrews 11:6 that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that's why we've started in this online school of ministry, in this video school of ministry. We started in the very area that is most important, and that is faith. You know, Jesus said in John 5, 19, uh, 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 that, that he could do nothing except he saw the Father do it. Now, that's Jesus. Think about that. If Jesus could do nothing except he saw, and I'm not talking about with natural eyes. I'm talking about he knew what the scriptures said. So he could have read that and had, knowing the mind of God through the scriptures, he could know the mind of God by the Holy Spirit who was with him. And of course, in, in, in that relationship that he had with the Father, Father could commune with him anytime he chose. In fact, Jesus stayed in, pl in a place of communion with the Father. So Jesus had the ability by his knowledge of the scripture by his sensitivity to the Holy Spirit and his relationship with Father in communion, Jesus had the ability to see what the will of God was. What would Father do in this particular situation? And what he saw Father do is what he did. I'm, I'm bringing this out today because this is something that I, I believe we need to be more aware of it in the body of Christ today. Too many ministers today, and I say too many, far too many ministers today, are not voices, but are rather merely echoes. They, they open their mouth and they say what they heard someone else say, as though it were their own revelation. Don't, misunder, don't, don't, don't misunderstand me. It's perfectly fine. I'll, I'll tell you right off the top, I will say things that I have heard other men of God say, but not just because I heard them say it, but because I went to the scriptures, studied the scriptures, made that truth my truth because I know it's the truth, and now I can speak it with authority. You know, the Bible says to imitate those who through faith and patience have obtained the promises. So that's why we teach faith. Because imitate those who through faith and patience. You see, faith is primary. Without faith, you can't please the Father. How do you get faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Patience is a spiritual force, a dynamic spiritual force that joins with faith. And in joining with faith, it will then 
hold on to what faith has received in order to accomplish what faith needs. So that's what we're talking about here in faith. And that's why we put faith first. We keep it as a primary source of our meditation, of our work, of our drive, of what we want to build into us. Faith is the servant of the believer. And so we do, uh, in our study, we study the Word of God because we know that faith comes by hearing regardless of what arena in which you're studying. If you want to learn about healing, study healing, read the Word, minister the Word to yourself, speak the Word, listen to other good ministers of the Gospel, spend time in prayer and allow the Spirit of God to reveal to you. Spend time in communion with the Father, allow Spirit, our Father by His Spirit to speak to your heart, to reveal to you, allow the Word of God to come alive in you. And as you do those things, faith will grow in you for healing. If you're studying about the laws of reciprocity, giving and receiving, the same principle must be applied. If you're studying about deliverance, and I'm talking about biblical deliverance, not what we've seen someone do on television or read about someone in a book other than the scriptures. And once again, remember, if someone is doing it correctly, learn from them. But that's why it's imperative extremely imperative for you as a, as a man or a woman of God to study the scriptures so you can say before God, I have studied to show myself approved unto you, my God, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because if you are rightly dividing the word of truth, you will not, uh, you will not be deceived by those who lie in wait to deceive, according to what the scripture says, with cunning craftiness. And I'm telling you, there are those in the church today. They, they are in our church houses, not everywhere, but many places who are lying about with cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. They're looking for a way to deceive you, to get advantage over you. And my friend, that is not of God. So you and I need to be students of the Word, studying the Word of God, and not running off just because you have a bright idea, but continue to study the Word of God. Let me give you one example. I mentioned healing. 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who his own self bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we being dead to sin could live unto righteousness, and by his stripes you were healed. Now, that scripture is truth. But you can take that one scripture and build things from it that might not be accurate. So before you start teaching about 1 Peter 2.24, you need to study every other scripture you can find about healing. Now you can read the word to anybody, quote the word to anybody. But if you're going to teach on it, if you're going to minister on it, you need to have knowledge of the word of God. You need to know what Matthew 8.17 says himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. You need to know what Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They shall be life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. You need to know Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. You need to be aware of, uh, of, of, of the words of Jesus uh, concerning healing. He, when, when, uh, when a man came up and wanted to be healed of leprosy, and he said, if thou canst, thou will make me clean. And Jesus didn't say can, he said, I will. You see, the man knew he had the ability, but the man was not aware that it was the will of the Lord to heal. Now listen to me. God doesn't change. 
And if it was the will of Jesus to heal, then it had to have been the will of the Father because Jesus only did what he saw the Father do. Hear what I'm saying. You need to know the scriptures. And when you compare the scriptures diligently one to another, from that you can build a doctrine of healing that will stand the test of time. It will stand against the scrutiny of those who would try to destroy your life and your ministry. It will stand and God will uphold you in it. Now, we're, I, know, I know I've taken some time, but you need to hear this. I need to say these things. I need to hear them myself. One, one, of, the, one of the people that I preach to most is me. I study the Word of God. I read the Word of God. I speak the Word of God about myself, to myself, over myself. Concerning my ministry, the, the things that I do, my business, everything that I'm connected with, I speak the Word of God over it. I'm preaching I'm to every creature. And every creature means every created thing. Hallelujah. Let's get into the Word here in the study of faith today. Now we've had three sessions already. This is our fourth individual lesson on faith. Mark 11, 20 through 2 through 24. We've shared that as a foundation text. I want to share these four texts with you. Jesus said to, the, to, the, to his disciples, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you what things soever you desire. When you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. We look also at Matthew 21, verses uh, 21 and 22. Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall uh, not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also you shall say to the mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and it shall be done. And all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Didn't say all, he didn't say you'll receive all things you ask in prayer, if you're believing. And, and see, th th that's why we need to study this, because you can, you can have a mental assent you can give a, a, a mental acquiescence, if you will, to something that someone has said, but if it's not based on Scripture, then you don't really have faith on which to base that, and therefore you're really not believing. You see, believing and faith are connected. Without faith, you have nothing in which to believe, therefore your believing is a false believing. That's why so many people are disappointed in what has been called the faith message. Well, well, I tried that. It didn't work for me. Well, well, what were you believing? What were you really believing? Were you believing that Jesus is the healer? Oh, yes. Were you believing that it is his will to heal? Oh, yes. Were you believing that his will, his will to heal now? Oh, yes. Did you believe that you received what you asked for when you prayed? Well, I didn't see anything. See? There you are basing your belief system on something that is unbiblical. You're basing it on experience. You're basing it on what you see, feel, taste, touch, smell. But the scripture says faith is based on what God's word says. And that's it. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, not by what you see not by what you hear with a natural ear, it's what you have heard with your spiritual ear and what you have allowed to grow into your spirit being. So once again, you have to, whatever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Luke 6, verses 46 to 49. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He's like a man who built an house, and he digged deep 
Are you studying the word of God? Are you digging deep? He digged deep and laid the foundation on the rock. The rock of what? The rock of revelation knowledge. You see, that's what Jesus said he built the church on. Jesus had said to his disciples in Matthew 16, Whom do men say that I am? And they said, Well, some say you're Elias or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus said, Well, who do you say I am? And they said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to Peter, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven and upon this rock. What rock, Peter? No, no, no. No. Upon the rock of revealed knowledge, I will build my church. If you go back to the Old Testament and the rock that followed the children of Israel, that spiritual rock that followed them in the wilderness, Moses struck it, water flowed forth. Then the Lord said, after that first encounter, See, that's like, that's like being a young Christian. You, you really don't know much. You're young in the faith, and God will do things for you that just, I mean, they're just, uh, it's unbelievable sometimes. I say unbelievable. In the natural sense, you look and say, I don't understand how that young Christian got that. Well, they're babes. When a baby cries, we give it attention. But as you grow in the Lord, you become responsible for doing things the way God would do them because you're no longer a baby. Now you speak. You don't hit it. You don't strike it. You don't, you don't, you're, not, you're not trying to beat something out of it or get it on a sudden motion. You speak to the rock. How did Moses miss his promise? He missed his promise by smiting the rock the second time. In other words, as a more mature believer, as a leader in the body, instead of doing it God's way, he went back to his old childish way. And he smote the rock. And that disobedience to the way of God cost Moses his trip into the promised land. Hear what I'm saying to you, man of God. Hear me, woman of God. There are promises before us, and we've all done this. We've all missed it in this arena. But it's time we grew up. It's time we began to realize who we are in Christ, what he has called us to do, how he has called us to do it. Hear what I'm saying. When we were babes in Christ, we could pray and God would just answer us just there. It was, it was, it was amazing. But now we're no longer babes in Christ. Now we've grown in Christ and God has a way. And the way that God has now is to speak to the mountain. You don't hit it with a stick any longer. You speak to it. You don't hit the tree. You speak to it. You don't hit the rock of revelation. You speak to it. But we have ministers of God, men and women of God, and elders in the body of Christ who are yet today trying to get from God things that they need the way they got them when they were babes in Christ, when all they knew how to do was pick up a stick and hit something. The rules change when you grow up. You have to do things differently. You know, when, 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 when a child is born in our country, and you want to go down the road with that child in your car. You have to put a car seat in the car. You have to put the child in the car seat. It has to be officially approved. It has to be uh, installed properly. And you put the child in the car and buckle everything up. And if it's not done properly, you can be cited by law enforcement for endangering the child in the car. But when that child grows a bit, and then, well, for, now I'm a grown man. I don't have a child's car seat any longer. I don't sit in the child's car seat any longer. Now I get in the car, I drive the car. But you know there are still laws in place. And one of the laws says that I have to put a seat belt on when I'm in my car. So I put the seat belt on, but it's done differently. Now I don't get into a car seat and have my mommy strap me in in the back seat. Now I get into the front seat of the car and I drive myself, but I still have to use a seat belt, but I use it differently. I'm grown up. As a babe in Christ, we cry out to God with things and our faith may be very diminutive, but God hears the cry of a babe and he will respond and meet the needs of baby Christians. But when you've had time to grow, my friend, 
Baby stuff doesn't work anymore. That's what Paul wrote to the church at Corinth about. He says, where you ought to be teaching, you still require milk. No, it's time to grow up. It's time to do things differently. It's time to do things the way the Word says to do them. And you need to hear what I'm saying to you. Because you may be young in ministry, almost like a babe in ministry. And we all were at some point in time. I wasn't a baby Christian when I began ministry, but I was surely a babe in ministry. And God did things for me that were just, oh, so amazing. But I'm no longer a baby minister, and now I have to do things differently if I'm going to receive something from God. I can't go around beating on things with a stick anymore. I have to speak to it. I have to believe it. And my believing has got to be based on word of God, on real faith, not just on the way I did things 40 years ago. My believing must be different. I, are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Once again, Jesus said, this man dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock, a rock of revelation. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon the house, and it could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man without a foundation, who built a house upon the earth against, the stream, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of the house was great. Matthew 7 Verses 24 through 27, Jesus said the same thing in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, He that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them shall be likened unto the wise man who built his house upon a rock. Do you hear that? He called him a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, the flood came, and the wind blew and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded on a rock. But he that heareth my sayings and does not do them is the foolish man who built his house upon the sand. He didn't dig down to the rock. He just built the house. Had the same building materials, built in the same flood plain, built in the same, probably the same housing development. But when the flood came, the winds blew and beat upon the house. Rains came, the floods came, and the wind blew. It fell, and great was the fall of it. What was the difference in the two houses? One man had dug deep. One man had studied to show himself approved. One man had learned and grown and did things differently. The other man did things the same way he did when he was a child. You know, I remember as a little boy, we had uh, uh, a thing. It was, it was, they were called like Lincoln logs, and they were little blocks of wood that were cut in knots, and you could build little log cabins, uh, uh, you know. And, and they were cute, and they were fun, and it kind of taught you some things about how things needed to be put together. It was a great toy. But, you know, I could build my Lincoln log house. I could build it on my mother's kitchen table. I could build it on the floor. I could take it out in the yard and build it. I could, I could, I could build it in, in, a, in, a, in a sand lot. I could build it on the grass. I could build it on the, on the tailgate of my daddy's truck. I could build it anywhere I wanted to. But if the truck moved, if the table shook, if I left it outdoors and it rained, guess what? When I came back, my little house would be washed down. It would be broken down. Why? It wasn't built like the big house was, like the house in which we lived on a foundation of stone or concrete. You see, when you grow up and you start building for the kingdom of God, when you're grown up, you have to build differently than you did when you were young. Hear what I'm saying. I'm giving you one of the most valuable lessons you'll ever learn in ministry and for that matter in just growing up in the Lord. Also one more thing about that. Jesus said the man that hears the word and does it is the wise man. And the man that hears the word but doesn't do it is the foolish man. And when you go to the 25th chapter of Matthew, Jesus talks about 10 virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. Now, what did Jesus say a wise man was in Matthew 7? The man that heard the word and did it. What was the foolish man? The man that heard the same word, but he didn't do it. And then in Matthew, same book, same Jesus, same red letters, if you have the red letter edition of the Bible, he said five were wise and five were foolish. And what do you think comprises the wise people? Remember, Jesus doesn't change. His identity, his definition of wisdom in Matthew 7 would be the same definition of wisdom in Matthew 25. 
And his definition of foolishness in Matthew 7 is the same definition of foolishness in Matthew 25. Matthew 7, he did the word, he was wise. He didn't do the word, he was foolish. Matthew 25, the wise ones, who were they? They're the ones that heard the word and did it. And they're the ones that had not leaked away all of the oil of the Spirit in their life. But those who heard the word and didn't do it, they kept going back. Those were the dry ones. They didn't have to go out and commit sin. My friend, you can dry up in a good church. Just try to stay a baby all your life. And the five foolish ones missed the Lord when he came to take them to the, bride, to the, to the marriage. Think about it. James 1.22, let me finish reading these scriptures. But be ye doers of the word. You hear that? Doers. It's not enough to hear it. You need to do it. Because as you do it, not only are you walking in obedience, you're also being wise. As you continue walking in wisdom, you become understanding. And as you walk in understanding, you become well, you, you begin to walk in real knowledge, revelation knowledge of the Word of God. And when you have revelation knowledge of the Word of God, my friend, at that point, you're without excuse. It's time to get the job done and do it God's way. Be ye doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. The biggest decept deceiver in the church today is not the devil. The biggest deceiver in the church today is not ministers who are preaching erroneous doctrines. The biggest deceiver in the church today are believers who hear the word but don't do it, and they are deceiving their own selves. They're the biggest deceivers in the church. So if you're being deceived, the biggest problem is in the mirror when you look into it. You need to look into that word the mirror of the word, and change according to what you see. If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass or a mirror. He sees himself, he goes away and forgets right away what he looks like. I'm not going to continue just discussing that. These are scriptures that we've talked about before. And we're going to continue to talking about them. But the, the emphasis that we have today that I really want to bring to you, and we've already talked about it much, believe it or not. The emphasis that I want to make in today's lesson is that we be people of the Word who read, study, and meditate upon the Word, who dig deep into the Word, but that we then also do the Word. We act on the Word. We do what it says. We obey the word. We demonstrate that we are people of wisdom because we are people of the word. So again, we're talking about acting on the word of God. Now, we're going to take a break here, give you an opportunity to discuss what we've talked about so far. And I have, I have laid a, a, a heavy load of, of teaching on you in these first 30 minutes. Talk about them. Take time and discuss what I've said to you. I've told you truth. And if Jesus said in John 8, if you, to his disciples, to those who believed, that is, they had real faith, they had something real in which to believe, he that, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Take time to talk about these things. I'll be believing God with you. If you have questions, write them down. Get them to your leader. He'll get them to me. I'll respond to you. Right now, let's take a break, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. 